Hi everyone, welcome to episode 19. So I'd like to start off today by uh, implementing some sort of a uh, aim UI element, so sort of crosshairs, I guess. So I'm just gonna jump into Photoshop and uh, you can of course download the finished file from the description, but if you're following along, uh, you gotta make something say 400 by 400 should be okay. And I'm just gonna drag out some, some guidelines so I can find the exact center of my canvas. And I'll go over here to the ellipse tool and just drag out from the center, alt and shift to get a nice circle like so. And I'm just gonna set the, uh, the fill color to clear and the stroke color to white and just play with the um, size of the stroke just to uh, get something nice and nice and fat. Yeah, something like that maybe. And uh, now I just want to sort of mask out a little section of this. Uh, so I'm just going to go into the um, into the preferences, into the guides, grids, and slices, and just make a grid line every 10%. And then uh, just to enable the grid with uh, command apostrophe, I think is the command. Press L to uh, get my little uh, lasso tool here. And I'll just say cut out a segment um, just something like that maybe, and press the mask tool. So now I'm just going to rotate this around uh, uh, 90 degrees. So Command J to duplicate, rotate like so, duplicate again, and once more. So I think that's that's essentially what the crosshair is going to look like, uh, just with a dot in the middle. Um, but I want that dot maybe to be able to change color when you say hover over an enemy. So I'm going to create that actually as a separate UI element. We can actually just use the default Unity knob element. That's just a plain circle. Um, so I'm going to uh, remove the background so that's clear and just save this. I'll save it, say, to the desktop. Just call this crosshairs. And we can now import that into our, say, our prefabs folder. And I'm going to change that from a texture type to a sprite. That's a single sprite. Don't need to generate map maps. And uh, yeah, let's apply. So let's drag that into our scene. And uh, going to rotate at 90 degrees, like so and the white's a bit difficult to see. I'm just gonna make it black for now. Uh, we can experiment with some color schemes later on. It's also probably a little bit big, so maybe something more like that is better. Um, we're, we're going to want this to be sort of at the height of the player's weapon, and uh, we also want to create that little dot inside of it, so I'm just going to Command D, duplicate these crosshairs, and just parent that under there, and I'll call this dot, and change the the sprite to that um, that knob that I was talking about, like so. Um, we can't see it at the moment because it's hidden behind the player, so let me just move that. Um, why is it still invisible? It's just really tiny, okay. Um, maybe scale that up. Something like that looks nice. Okay, so it's no good this sort of getting um, hidden behind things like the obstacles, we want it to be rendered on top of everything else. So I'm actually going to create another camera. Uh, let me just duplicate maybe the, the main camera and just remove the main camera tag from this. And I'll call this, say, I mean, this is probably only going to be rendering the crosshairs, so I'll just call it crosshairs camera or maybe UI camera, something like that. I'll just parent that uh, to the main camera. And we're going to want this only to render the UI layer. So we can go into the culling mask to set that to nothing and now choose only UI. And we don't want it to render a skybox. We want to go depth only and set the depth, uh, where's that, the depth over here to one so that it renders on top of the main camera. Okay, so the main camera, we want to render everything except the UI so that it doesn't get rendered twice. And of course, we want to add the UI layer to our crosshairs. Okay, so now as you can see uh, over here, it's being rendered on top of everything else, which is great. 
Um, so we want to now get this actually moving around in our script. So that'll probably be in the player script. Let's open that up. Um, so we're going to want to get a reference to our crosshairs object. So let's just say public transform uh, crosshairs. And over here, where we're calculating the mouse position by casting the ray against that ground plane we created, uh, we can say that our crosshairs dot position is equal to the mouse point. Okay, so now if we just assign uh, assign the crosshairs to the player. This should be working more or less. We can move the crosshairs around. Um, they are being rendered uh, at the ground position, which is not really ideal for sort of most accurate aiming. We'd want them to be rendered at the height of the gun. So let's go into the gun controller. And uh, let's create a little accessor here. So public float. Um, to get the height of the weapon, so we can just call that get, or rather just uh, maybe gun height. All right, so that can get and return the, maybe just the height of the weapon holder. So weapon hold dot position on the Y axis. And then our player, uh, when we're creating this ground plane, instead of creating it at vector 3.0, we can create it at the weapon height. So that would be vector3.up multiplied by gunController.gunheight. Okay, so that should resolve that issue. And it has. So, okay, we're going to want to create a, uh, a new c -sharp script for the crosshairs themselves. Um, Let's add the crosshair script to the crosshairs. And what I'd like the script to do is to, first of all, maybe just rotate slowly around the y-axis um, just for effect. And also to light up the uh, little aim dot whenever it uh, is moved over an enemy. So let's open up the script. And in the update method to make it rotate, we can quite simply say transform.rotate around the up axis, um, say pick some speed, maybe 40 multiplied by time dot delta time. Okay, and then we'll also want to do a ray cast against all of the enemies in the map. So let's make a layer mask for that. Uh, we can call this the target mask. Okay, um, the ray that we want to use is basically the same ray that's being created in the uh, in the player script over here. So maybe we can just use that ray again. Let's say we uh, we create a public void. Um, uh, how about um, detect targets? I don't know if that's such a great name, but it can take in a ray ray, and it can just say if physics dot raycast with that ray, and we also want to give it um, a length, so just say 100, that should cover everything, and the target mask. Okay, so if it hits something in the target mask, then we can set our little dots color to some color, say public color um, dot highlight color. Okay, and we also want to keep track of the original dot color, so color original dot color and we need a reference to the dot itself of course so that's a public sprite renderer dot okay so in the start method we can set the original dot color um, equal to the dot the dots color okay and then if we detect a target then we can say dot dot color is equal to the highlight color, otherwise we just set it back to its plain old original color with dot dot color equals original dot color. Okay, so we want to call this, uh, this uh, detect targets method from the player script with that ray that we create. Uh, so instead of having a reference to the crosshairs transform, we actually want a reference to the crosshairs script itself. So let's say crosshairs 
And of course, crosshairs doesn't have a position variable, so we have to say crosshairs dot transform dot position. Okay. And we can then say crosshairs dot detect targets and pass an array. Okay. Let us set up all of these things on the crosshairs. So target mask will be the enemy. The dot is this guy over here. And for the highlight color, um, I don't know, maybe some sort of cyan -y color. Something like that, perhaps. Or um, maybe it can turn red. And then by default, it can be that sort of uh, that light blue. Okay, something like that. Um, let's test that out. Getting an error already. Uh, probably need to reassign the crosshairs since I changed the, uh, the the variable type there. So let's try this out. Um, oops, I'm, I'm I'm rotating along the wrong axis. Sorry. Let's open that up. Uh, where is it? Crosshairs. This should be what instead of up. It should be vector three dot forward since it's rotated ninety degrees. I think. Um, let's see if I got that right. Yeah, that's better. And it is, uh, the little center thing is going red whenever we hover over an enemy. I'd like to hide the mouse now that we've got this uh, this crosshairs. Um, let's go into crosshairs and just in start we can maybe say uh, screen dot. Oh wait, they, they changed it, didn't they? It's, it's not in screen anymore, where is it? Um, is there actually a cursor, a cursor class now? Uh, cursor dot set visible. Oops, cursor dot visible is equal to false. Okay, that should do it. So save and uh, I think for some reason I'd prefer if it was rotating in the other direction, so clockwise. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, so I'm not entirely sure about the aesthetics of the crosshair. Uh, maybe it needs to be a little bit smaller. This is maybe not the best design in the world. Um, you guys can maybe come up with something better. Uh, maybe, can I make this white? I don't know. I'd I'd really like it to be white, but it's it's impossible to see, isn't it? Can it be some other color? I don't know. When when we start putting image effects on, um, get a better sense of which colors work and which don't. For now, I'm just going to keep it black since it's nice and easy to see. Um, yeah. So all right, that's the the crosses implemented. Very nice. Um, might as well just go ahead and fix this bug that's. Uh, that's occurring here where the the tiles that spawn enemies sometimes aren't uh, resetting back to their original colors. Uh, so let's go into the spawner, wherever that is, um, right here at the end. So the issue, uh, if we go down here to the spawn enemy coroutine, is that uh, if, if we're spawning a enemy at a tile that is already flashing, uh, then we'll set its initial color equal to that flashing color, and then when it sort of resets back to the initial color, then well, it will it will think the initial color is the flash color. So, since all of our tiles are white, I'm just going to set the initial color equal to color dot white. Seems fair enough, and yeah, that should fix that bug. Um, so yeah, that is everything for this episode. Um, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.